All right, welcome. <laughs> welcome to episode 46. We have some special guests today here that will talk about flight trackers, uh, piloting planes and paragliding, and I don't know what else. Uh, so <laughs> we're yeah, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. So let's, yeah, let's give, let's give them a, a good introduction. How are you, Ketil? How are you, Rafa? Hello. Fine, thank you. Awesome. So Great make a, a, a tiny introduction. Uh, yeah, you, give us a you, little, a little bit of an intro. Ketil. People now ask, but yeah, ask, and, but yeah, they don't know you. Who are you, Ketil? No. <laughs> Should I start or will you go first, uh, Rafael? No, please go ahead. Go ahead. You're the sure. guest. Yeah, you're the guest. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kettel. I'm uh, living in um, Bergen by the Norwegian West Coast. Nice. It's a, a beautiful city, I would say so. But um, yeah, you might judge for yourself uh, if you get here sometime. And I know you've been there, actually. So, Mark, that's awesome. Uh, I get, got started with uh, Balena a few years back. I've always been um, into... Um, uh, uh, aviation and flying. I'm a paraglider pilot, so I cruise in the Norwegian mountains. Uh, and when this concept of um, flight tracking with a cheap USB stick was a concept uh, back in the days, uh, like 10, eight, 10 years ago, I uh, instantly got started uh, exploring how that worked uh, on a Windows computer. Uh, luckily, um, stuff uh, evolved, and um, after a while, uh, the Unix or uh, sorry, the Linux version came uh, on the Raspberry Pi, so um, I got that up and running. But instantly, run into issues with uh, crashing SD cards, and I guess that's a story which many of you can relate to. <laughs> yeah, we sure can. Absolutely. We have also, we have um, uh, a. Um, cabin by the Norwegian coast, uh, a perfect spot for setting up a feeding station. So uh, the problem was that the internet connectivity is not that good, so uh, we needed to use um, wireless internet. And again, doing um, remote administration is a pain uh, if we need to set up SSH tunnels and maintain it by hand through proxies and so on. So once again, Balena came to the rescue. And um, since I've been a fan, so I, um, I push this out uh, all over and have a lot of devices running today. And it's yeah, awesome. You're a fleet owner, right? <laughs> you're a fleet owner, yeah. Yes. Super I'm cool. I'm proud to call myself that today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Rafa, wh what do you do? Tell us more about you. You're the first time on, on the stream, right? Yeah, uh, first, first time. time on the stream. Five months in Balena now, and first time on stream. I'm oh. working in Malena for the customer success team. So we are uh, talking with people on different uh, IoT projects. And on my personal side, I I also fly planes. And the tracker was something that uh, the minute I saw it in the in the hub, I said, OK, I, I need to install this. <laughs> so it was a kind of an intro to, to Balena and to the flight tracker. Exactly. I remember on your first weeks that you wanted to install it and you ask like for support and yeah, try it, you know, try the documentation and if you have problems, no, and then I remember that you came like, hey, it worked. Wow. It's super yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Super easy. Uh, yeah, you only have to do three clicks and configure some variables and there I had it. It was so nice. So probably today we will learn the hard parts, right, of the installation because there are, right? Hard parts? No, there's no hard parts. It's easy. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to go through a live build of it for sure. Yeah, you yes. know, I call, it, I call it a lollipop. You know, a lollipop is a thing that it's very easy to, to have, but it takes a bit you know, to finish it. So then you <laughs> just uh, <laughs> click, install, configure variables. So very simple. Lollipop, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's, good, it's uh, not mine. Good I, got for, for I got it from a friend. <laughs> All right. So I think we got a, a nice introduction of why we are here, no? Why we have Kittel here explaining about the, this flight tracker, ATSB. Um, maybe let's jump into a quick, let's 
pray for a quick uh, what's on your desk? Oh, what's on your I... desk is never quick. You know this, Mark. <laughs> you know this. <clears throat> I can only imagine what is on Rafa and Katil's desk, but uh, but we'll try to keep it quick, yes. OK, we have Travis yeah. actually on the chat who, who holds the world record, uh, yeah. not for what's on your desk, but like the number of items. Yeah, Travis, I see his comment. Travis yeah. has the uh. most, uh, the highest quantity of items shown on any one single IoT happy hour, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. We'll see if I can update first? today. Yeah, maybe. Who wants to go first? Should Rafa. I start or do you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll start Rafa. with our guests. Absolutely. Yes. Kittle, go ahead. Right. What do you have? So the first item is a given. That's something everybody has. Uh, it's the duct tape roll. Oh, it's absolutely. Strong for pulling out your eyebrows, right? But I want to try that That's today. a good one. Can Any IoT project needs duct tape. Yeah. Absolutely. Duct Duct tape uh, yep. is, uh, of course, in and um, being um, where we are now, it's not surprising that we have a lot of uh, different hardware. So here's a brand new Jetson Nano we might get to play with. Here is a Raspberry Pi uh, 3. B Plus uh, have some um, dongles, which might be handy for this uh, yeah, little we'll, happy hour. We'll so this is the uh, ABS yeah, we'll, B dongles. We'll so talk about those in these. a moment. Yep. We'll talk about those. Um, when it gets a little boring, I of, of course have a Yetzi, which uh, <laughs> I uh, just roll the dice together with myself. When the family is uh, not around like today, I will have to do it all over that. Uh, I have a nice um, first book here. This is, uh, I'm starting a new job in a few weeks, and this is the uh, anniversary book they gave me, which is a great read, recommended. Oh, and it's falling on. Pieces here. Oh, it's breaking More, things. Uh, raspberries. We are breaking stuff. <laughs> Broke stuff. We have, oh, no. <laughs> antenna. We have, um, yeah, uh, actually, during these corona times, I've gone all analog. So I have uh, note, manual notebooks and pencils. That's uh, again. Oh, that's good. Now, wait a minute. Can you hold that's up it. the Yahtzee again? Hang on a minute. Yes. I shot JR as saying that that's not how you spell Yahtzee. Yatsi. Uh, this must is the be the Norwegian, the, the the Norwegian the version. <laughs> it's Yatsi. Yatsi. <laughs> the US it's version a... is, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, man. Uh, this is the way you should spell it. Oh, that's, that that's the correct spelling. I shot J. Um, uh, homemade aerial uh, LoRa antenna. Actually, like quite a, good. It's like a moon tuned. lander. It's moon. Yeah, it's like the Apollo uh, landing station. And uh, nice one. Uh, Homemade, um, also a um, nice uh, LoRa one device, which uh, that's a different session, but still uh, yeah, have a couple of these ones around. We've yeah, had some uh, LoRa. Yeah, it, uh, it's a SciPy. No, it's a, what? What's that? What's that uh, device? Uh, this one. Inside. This is yeah. the PyCom. Uh, yeah, the PyCom. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I that's, think I have it as well. Yeah. And the uh, TT Go T beam, that's uh, something I guess uh, many of you have. Um, does not run Balena though, so it's kind of something we just throw away. Uh, then we have. Um, <laughs> so still good for it, we're not throwing it. Oh, we have and it, uh, had more. The, it had the film on, uh, David. The film was still on? The film, yeah. <laughs> you don't peel the film off. The, uh, if it's got a little LCD, you always yeah, leave yeah. the film on. Yeah, yeah. We don't yeah. want it to be scratched. No, it's exactly. Broken, See, there you go. See, it doesn't Mark? matter. I shot JR. You hear that? But how satisfying it is to remove the film. No, no it is not satisfying. It is stressful. You do not remove the film. We all know this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a given. So. And uh, a couple of these ones, this nice little Arduino maker one, 30, those are good. 1310. Yeah, those are good awesome. to have around. And also this, uh, uh, in Norway, there is a lot of, of crime, so I also have some weapons, some ninjukos to defend myself. Uh, okay, in case... Um, uh... no, just uh, kidding, this is actually um, uh, an uh, antenna for the ADS-B uh, tracker. So this is the oh, outdoor cool. version, which uh, I have on the roof. This is uh, oh, wow. a spare I brought to show you here today. It's so you can track flights camera. from anywhere in the world with that thing, okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> And your oh, background yes. is it's fake or it's real? You have a library behind you. 
Yeah, it's uh, this is just a green screen. Uh, sorry about that, okay. but it's okay. a magic one. It's a green screen which I can pull out stuff from like this. <laughs> Boom! It's not so it's, uh, it's, a it's, uh, it's a magic <laughs> green screen. Okay, the magic one. It's a magic green screen that contains actual books. Yes. So this is uh, okay. a little bit of magic. All right. Now here's the problem. I wasn't counting. Mark, were you counting how many items that was? He might. Uh, he might have said, I don't know if that was a new record or not. <laughs> I, I'm not I sure. It, yeah, in a short time. Uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Rapid fire succession, by yeah. all means. That was the best as far as density. Oh, baby, your desk. And smashing. So yeah. smash and the there was one. smashing. That was the first time I think we've witnessed any smashing. Oh, well, no, oh. I did Finally murder first. an SD card once. But. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All that right. was amazing. Very cool, man. Very All good. All right. Thank Rafa, you. what's on your desk? My desk is very boring compared to Katil's. <laughs> Mine too. Okay, of course, I've got my <laughs> Raspberry Pi here, which I, I, this is the first one I installed the, the tracker, and I have my fin. All right. My yes. Balina fin. Then I have uh, the useful tools we all need. What's okay, What's so I, uh, I don't like it. making mistakes. This is uh, always mm -hmm. on my desk. It's my daughter's uh, Father's Day gift. So I okay. keep it with care. My phone, my mobile phone here, see? Okay. <laughs> this is, this is uh, the Balenas customer success team phone? Or? That's yeah, the, the corporate phone. Corporate. That's the corporate phone, okay. <laughs> Good. This is, the, Good. The, this is the first phone I had. 1993, I think it was. <laughs> nice. I imagine. It's still working? Uh, no, I, I just have it as a as memory. And it had a cool feature. On those times, you could you could swap the color of the, of oh, the, of the wow. keyboard. So imagine, I'm so proud. You this. could personalize it then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was so cool. <laughs> oh, man. Amazing. What else do I have? I have my coffee mug, of course. I, it's usually full, and then I have uh, headphones, headphones, mod, more wireless headphones, a mic to play guitar. When I when when I used to play guitar, I used it for playing guitar and trying to do something. Then I stopped. You playing the guitar in the car? Is that what you just said? No, no, no. I used to play the guitar, oh, and then I would oh. record, uh, try to record. And then I I stopped. But then I'm I'm trying to use it on my conferences and it doesn't work as well as the earphones. So and I want to show my antenna compared to Ketil. This this is a joke. <laughs> oh, you're gonna oh, yes. have to telescopic improve. one. No, you've got to improve your, your antenna uh setup there. Yeah, yeah, you saw what Ketil had. Yeah, but maybe Ketil <laughs> started with one of these, right? Yes, I actually started with this one, so it's even uh, okay. uh, oh, that's more not embarrassing. Yet, so. <laughs> no worries, you're doing good there, Rafa. Okay. This tiny, right? So it's really yeah. tiny. This is what we're looking for. Yeah, better for yeah. self-defense. Yeah, because I, because on this project, size matters, or or what's your experience yes. here? Yeah. As always. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you well, didn't show. I, I don't know you if you have it there. This is my my tracker, my ADSB receiver. I don't know if you yeah, have it there. Uh, that one. Black, but the same thing. I see. Yeah, yeah. We were talking a bit about this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mark. Anything Maybe. on your desk? Oh, nothing. Me? Nothing interesting that I haven't shown before. So all right, all let's yours. Switch my camera. Mine is blurry cam. Here we go. Okay. What do you have? I have a new mouse pad. Yeah, this I is see. my new mouse pad right You're here, Git and cheat. <laughs> it's my Git. Come on, this is upside down. It's my Git cheat sheet <laughs> mouse pad. So that's so really cool. No more making mistakes and uh, pushing to the wrong repo for me. I've got my new cheat sheet. I also have the zebra. This is <laughs> this is obviously used when doing AI detection <laughs> for this NCS stick that's sitting down here. You got to have an animal. Today I'm using a zebra. 
<laughs> and what are your javelinas, your plastic javelinas? I couldn't find any. That's why I had to get this. I cannot imagine that on Amazon. No, I'll have to take a better look. I couldn't <laughs> find any, so I had to go with a zebra. Meanwhile, my children are looking for their zebra. <laughs> so that, that's it for me. <laughs> All right. So let's start with um with, with yeah with the project with the, the AVSB flight tracker. Yeah? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's go. what do we need actually if uh, if we want to so let's start like a cooking recipe. So what do what do we need before starting a, a project? Uh, if we want to track the planes that are flying. What do we need or, or how does it work? Yes. Well we can first all of all, what hardware both? do we need? Oh yeah, up to you and, guys. Uh, <laughs> I can share with my screen my bit sure. if we can do that yeah. uh, in addition to the video. Share screen. Find the correct tab because I have uh, more on my desktop than on my desk. So I think I'll only share uh, a tab. So I find the right one here. Yes. Okay, let me share that. All right. Uh, yep, I can see it. Perfect. I'm so uh, just that. using this as a little um, uh, guide to, uh, to show uh, what we need. Uh, so if you haven't already gone in there, you could uh, uh, go into uh, the URL if that's visible. If not, we can share it in uh, the comments. Sure. Um, yeah, also, we'll, show, uh, we'll soon be showing how you can deploy this from the beautiful new um, Balena Hub which make it every, a lot more easy, uh, actually. It's almost too easy. It doesn't feel like uh, an achievement to do this anymore. So that's a bit, um, that's a bit of a drawback, but still it's uh, fun because it's effortless. So what we need, you can pick and choose uh, from the um, devices you see here. Uh, you could use the Balena fin. I guess that would be the high end of the spectrum. I am um, wishing one of those for Christmas for sure, because uh, it comes with an uh, SSD drive and that uh, helps when um, you need to uh, use a lot of writing to the SD card. Also runs on the Intel NUC uh, in addition to the Jetson Nano, hopefully also on the higher end Nanos, but I haven't tried. I don't have that in the test bed, so I can't tell. And finally, obviously, runs beautifully on the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. It is also possible to get this working on the Raspberry Pi 0 and 1 and 2. Uh, but uh, over time, as this application has grown to uh, contain more different services, uh, that's kind of um, a bit of a stretch to, to get to work now. So if you want to do that, it's possible, but you would need to modify uh, the source to trim uh, down a bit on the number of services you serve. In addition to the hardware, so uh, for this, I'm going to use this uh, Raspberry Pi uh, tree. You also need uh, a, um, a, a RTL SDR dongle. So this uh, you can get cheap from eBay or AliExpress or just Google uh, RTL SDR dongle. This is kind of the entry level uh, type. If you want to up it a bit, the best one to go for is this um, orange here. Actually, there is a new edition of this, which is blue. It's called the Flight Ever Pro Stick. And uh, this is optimized for this use case of receiving uh, radio signals, uh, which are broadcast from the airplanes. I realized we, we, we didn't say anything about the concept. Uh, I hope that's mm -hmm. um, uh, more or less implicit, but uh, on a high level, we can say that this works by these small dongles, which are actually software defined radios, tuning in a publicly broadcasted signal from uh, airplanes. That's also part of the magic here. This uh, it's uh, stuff that's open, and uh, I guess everybody has checked out the uh, Flight Radar 24 site. But it's uh, even more cool to be able to do this directly without any third party delivering data to you. Instead, we can deliver data to them, and as a bonus, we get free access to uh, their services, which actually costs a few hundred dollars a year. So you could actually. Uh, 
if not uh, earn money, you could save a lot of money uh, by um, feeding data because it's not only the flight radar one, it's also uh, radar box, which is a competitor, plane finder, uh, and it's flight aware, and the uh, open research based one, which is based in Europe called Open Sky Network, which I would um, encourage all of you to feed to because they use this data for public research. So um, a common good there. Uh, what was the name of that uh, one? one more time? Patil? Open Sky Network? Open Sky Network, correct. I'll grab a link to that. That's awesome. Um, if we get time, we could also walk you through uh, what these services can provide. But now we should get started with the building so we don't run out of time. That's so, good. Rafael, have you been able to pick up the application I shared with you? Um, no. Where did so you share? First of all, uh, where should you go? Where should you go if you want to install your application? So maybe on Balina Hub. So your application actually was yes. one of the first, right? Maybe we yes. can show to the uh, community where to go. Yes, yep. let's uh, show that. Uh, I don't know if you don't see the URL. Uh, uh, bar, we still see I your guess, GitHub. But, uh, yeah, I see GitHub. Yes. Yeah. So we go to Hub, Balena, or IO. You don't see the URL, but we no, guess we can share that in the comments. And when you do, you get this. And hey, it looks like you have done some redesign overnight because uh, I haven't seen uh, all these menus before. Good work. Yeah, we have um, the blogs. Actually, uh, devoted one episode to the blocks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Nice. And all the way at the bottom here, just side by side by the Christmas tree, you will find the ADSB flight tracker. Um, and all you have to do now, if even if you haven't signed up for an account yet, you could um, deploy with Balena. So let's try to do that. It loads the console. Uh, and you get the ability to choose uh, your device. The default we, one is we don't see your screen. Yeah. yeah. Did it open in a new tab? Oh, yeah. a new tab. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It opened a new tab. It's all right. That's, no uh, I will just have to do some uh, configuring and it should be. Yeah, exactly. Just, uh, share your stop your complete. sharing. Yeah. I'll share once again. Meanwhile, uh, we have, well, uh, no, not a lot of questions, like a lot mm. of comments, but uh, uh, Aisha Jer was mentioning that this stick cost about $25, approx. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So it's not that uh, much more than the cheap one. So if you're serious about this, go straight for the stick and also hopefully for, for this. That's, uh, <laughs> The, I think I paid a bit more because uh, my stick came with the antenna, I, but not much more. I think it may be 35 euros, something like that. Right. Um, I think I'll just share the full uh, browser because uh, it will be okay, a no lot problem. of back and forth. We, uh, we still have time. Uh, actually, Arijit was mentioning that he really liked uh, the logo of your project. Thank you. Um, and it's actually uh, an icon. Uh, I paid a few bucks to get it licensed for this use use case. Yeah, it looks good. They did a good Everything job on it. Be. Thank you. Really cool. uh, can you now see my uh, yeah, the right screen? Your, uh, your Balena Cloud. So you just click deploy with Balena, and you tap open, and now yes. you are ready to create and deploy mm -hmm. an application. Are yes. you going to use an existing application or you're going yes. to pick a new one? Uh, good point. We have one um, prepared, which is uh, Happy Hour. Oh, so cool. in here, you could also choose to go and add the config um, options uh, straight away. But uh, it's, it's a few options that needs to be set. So I think we'll do that um, during the session. So we just okay. start. Uh, Mark, I believe and, um, there is a way to can the balina.yaml file bring those variables through for an application i believe there might mm -hmm. be a way to help automate some of that so if you're going to show us how to put the variables in awesome yeah. no problem um but there is a possibility i believe to also automatically inject them but uh, maybe that's a topic for another day yeah mm -hmm. um there is some of these um, uh, variables. Is, uh, we need actually to do some manual uh, work to retrieve oh, them. Oh, well, then it's, it's not um, even a 
then no no problem then gotcha yeah. but there is obviously a lot of room for uh, improvement there um, and i would also encourage all um uh, all uh, hackers uh, out there watching to uh, join in and contribute to to the um, development of this tool uh, it's in a state now where we can only improve it we support most uh, relevant services so it's all about optimizing going forward cool we um, have another question actually yes so will it run on an old raspberry pi one what do you think yeah Did i've I've had it running on uh, everything up until the four. So uh, for years, I used this one, which is the zero, which is the lowest end you can find. Um, but in order to do um, to get it to run now, you would need to edit uh, the uh, manifest files, the uh, Docker Compose, to get rid of some of the uh, containers. We have specifically the Balena kiosk, uh, kiosk application running and the uh, Wi-Fi connect. So a little bit of bells and whistles to present the data on a screen or a monitor. Um, and also the ability to connect to Wi-Fi if you move this around. This takes some um, uh, resources, so you might have to purge uh, them from your um, Docker Compose file. But it's certainly possible to get it to run, and I was running this app for years on a zero. I've also verified that it works on uh, the one, which I have here. But uh, that, again, not out of the box anymore, unfortunately. Right. If you are investing in a new hardware, um, uh, obviously, uh, Bal Balena Finn is the uh, best you can get for this. But um, Raspberry Pi 4 is uh, probably the uh, compromise if you... If you have a few uh, books to use for this, that's the one to go for because it comes with plenty of RAM. Uh, it yeah. uh, will uh, work for a long time with this for sure. Yeah, later we will talk about you know, if, if you can add more containers to this application. Yes. Um, uh, Rafael? Um, you did not get the invite yes. to the... Yes, um, I was, I was looking at the wrong email. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, so uh, what we should do, I guess, is to flash the memory card because uh, at least I need to do, do that. So I'll add the device here. Um, and if you haven't done this before, it's really, it's almost too easy. Just uh, download uh, the image and it will start downloading a zip file containing a image, which we also will burn with the um, Valena Etcher. Actually, what I understand is that we are going to do two ways to add a device into a, uh, into an application. One is Kittil uh, just yeah, flat, downloading the Valena OS with yeah, only for Ethernet, and yeah, and Etcher using Etcher for flashing an SD card. And then Rafa will move one device no to the to the application, so uh, that Kittil created and invite it. Yep, I just. Nice. Uh... I, I accepted uh, Ketil's invitation. So now I see in my list of applications, I see the happy hour. So now I'm going to plug the, my app. So, my... so Rafa, what are, what are you going to use? Uh, so we... Yeah, what hardware do you have over there that yep. you're going to use? I'm going to use this uh, Palina Finn with the... Uh, with some zoom to you. No, that's not me. Oh, yeah. that was me. <laughs> so this is the the Balena Finn one point one, if I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, here you see the the compute the Raspberry compute module. The compute module. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then you're uh, gonna connect. Use, yeah, USB. I'm going to connect the USB to any of the any any of the ports. It will okay. I, it will get them. It, it will get it automatically. So now it's running. So the um, because I have the the invitation, and right now in the in the application, I can see that it's in my console that it's building the the release. So I'm going to just add the device. I was going to add my Wi-Fi here. So actually, we we discussed about this on an ancient uh, episode, I think, with Matthew. Uh, how people, yeah, when when you have to go fast, what you what people does, and usually people is like moving devices instead of downloading the mm -hmm. or using OS. 
using Etcher to flash an SD card and, and probably that. What do you do yeah. when you need to run? Um, I very rarely move devices from one application to another. I find it easier for myself and my workflow to just flash the SD card and pop it into the device and let it come online in that manner. Um, but you're right. There's a there's a trick, and we have shown it before, and we could um, you know certainly show it again some other time, or even if Raphael is going to do it right now. But um, where if you have a device that's already already running in an application, it has a workload, it has a series of containers, it's doing its thing. You can through the dashboard choose the device, click move, and then choose a different application. And in that other application would be some entirely different workload um, you know set of series it, containers. Um, and when you do that, the device will say, great, I'll go join that fleet, figure out what I'm supposed to be running, delete and destroy, so you gotta be careful, the existing containers that are on the device, and then grab the new workload and just take over running that. So um, it's actually super convenient. Um, I don't know. I just tend not to use it. I tend to reflash. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but <clears throat> if you move devices, um, at, you are not updating the Belena OS, neither the supervisor. So correct. If correct. you do it, I remember that I was doing the, this during several weeks mm -hmm. or even a couple of months. And yep. then the, <clears throat> the OS that I needed to test was, was an, an, the newest version. And, uh, right. Yeah. And because yeah. I was moving the device, I was not realizing that I was not using the latest mm -hmm. version. So take take that into account as well when you move. Yeah, that's true. The OS remains the same. Um, so if it's you know two point five eight or two point six seven or whatever you you had originally flashed with, when you move that device, you're only nuking the containers and downloading the containers or workload from wherever the destination app is. So yeah. Just the um, just the workload changes. Just wanted Guys. to show. Uh, I've now flashed the card, so it's okay. uh, what next step. Put it, insert it in the little slot at the Pi. Yeah. Ready to go, and then we hook it up with um, this, right? And uh, importantly, ideally, it should be really close to a window. So I'm just okay. uh, heading out to get this uh, so we can actually get some um, real uh, actual flight data in here. I see there is a question uh, about actually my camera. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you for yeah. the compliment. Yeah. It's a um, DSLR uh, or mirrorless camera, the Panasonic Lumix GH3. Um, uh, using, Panasonic uh, Lumix GH3? Yes. Gotcha. So, um, Everyone Thank you for asking. I'll yeah. just be um, gone for a few seconds to get this mounted. So uh, I guess you'll see okay. at the green screen. Uh, in the anyway. Okay, we'll check out the green screen. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mark, it's a very you... nice green screen. Mark, can you share screen, uh, Rafa? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can yep. hear you. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll share my screen. Share screen. Uh, application window. But David, this is a webcam. What he said, what Kittel said, or um, not sure. exactly. Let's take a quick. Let me Google it and just take a quick hey. look. Can you see it? Mm. Um, see, yeah, yeah, give me no. a sec. Sorry, I was oh, okay. there. So look. Now I have uh, I have my my own organization and now I have Ketil's organization. So when I get here, I I see his application. So now what I'm going to do very easy. I come to my Balena IDS to find my fin. This is my app. So I'm just gonna ask him to to move it to the Happy Hour application. Mm -hmm. by Ketil. Yeah, it's important One that. Luckily, this is a Raspberry Pi 3 application. So, yeah, yeah. you have a Valina fin, so it will, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, use. I just have to admit I did a mistake here. So, uh, we have the first mistake uh, being made by 
mistakes were made by me. Uh, and that was that I forgot to add the Wi-Fi password. So I could quickly show you just how to do that because that's a beginner's mistake. So I blame it on the yeah. camera being on and me being a bit stressed out by it. So uh, let's just show you for a sec. Sure. Um, like this. Can you see my screen? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I forgot uh, in the heat of the moment, I only uh, <laughs> off the yeah. Only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to use Wi-Fi for this. So oh, hold on, let me get my pencil it. ready. Hold on. Yeah. It's all about the uh, praying to the correct gods. You know? Yeah. I don't know which yes. demo god you were praying to earlier. Uh, could have <laughs> the been the wrong one. one. For sure. Yeah, we download and try again. Luckily, this uh, is the first, uh, first part of the process. What takes a little bit of time is the building of the image. We see it's still uh, building here. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, is this you, uh, Raphael? Um, no, it's the first release. It's oh, done. Oh, oh, the UI. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's on. It's we are on. good. We are yep. good to go. You're, getting, you're awesome. arriving late. The plane is, is leaving. Without you, yes. the flight yeah. <laughs> I don't know the. I don't remember be... airport sounds anymore. So I no, it's been too long since I've been in an airport. You know that we missed the jingle. Yes. What's on your desk today, David? We did. Yeah, You're we right. did. It. We yeah. didn't even sing it. Yeah. Oh, we got too wrapped up by all of. Yeah. Uh, we are. We are very stressed today. Yeah. Like it's like so, we are. Uh, we are missing our plane. <laughs> Yeah, running, running through the terminal. <laughs> How many, who remember that, no? Uh, well, I'll tell you another Same thing we memories. forgot to do while we're waiting for Katil to yeah. get set up there. I'll tell you another thing we forgot, Mark, which was yeah. we forgot to make a community shout out that we are hiring. There yeah. are positions that are open that are on our uh, there you go that's what i was just going to ask for on our website at the bottom you can click through to the jobs link it will ultimately take you here to this url apply.workable.com slash belina and um we've got um i want to say uh the front end team is still looking i think the security engineer position may still be there as well um and of course there's always the design your own role um so if you have you know um expertise in in really any of the um you know the touch points that we have here at Bolina, iot os front end back end uh architecture um you know, devices, things like that. Um, by all means, you can always just write up your own uh, custom uh, job description and send it on through as well. So, yeah, we are we are stressed like we are running through a terminal ready to catch a plane. We missed that <laughs> call out earlier also. <laughs> okay, new of attempt. Uh, be back soon. Mark, switch my screen. You will see that my... My fin is already downloading all the containers, and it's uh, been getting all the new release. Yeah, it sure I, is. I didn't have to do anything. I just put it in, moved it, and that's it. So, so David, today we are going to create a new prize. It's like the most uh, uh, the number of containers running on a device. Who runs more <laughs> containers? Oh, well, OK. <laughs> the current record <clears throat> is as far as I know, the current record is held by Chris. However, this looks like it could be a close second. Um, <laughs> well, now you're the happy hour. I, I, well, I that's I what I was going to say. Chris, I know, holds the record, but I'm not sure if he's ever shown it. Um, you know, out of 46 episodes, they start to they start to blend together. I don't yeah. think he has. So this may be an IoT happy hour record for number of containers. You're absolutely right. Uh, before getting into, <laughs> into the topic, uh, let's get into, I shot JR wants to, to know what's <laughs> on your desk in Norwegian. <laughs> we got an answer actually. I don't know if, if, yeah. if it's your... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, 
That's oh, family. Gosh. That's my brother, actually. Your brother. Uh, <laughs> hey. hey, and I haven't seen him in a year because uh, he lives in Estonia with his family and we have been wow. uh, locked down for a long time. So uh, good to see you, bro. Looking forward to meeting yeah, in person awesome. sometime yeah. next year. Take a plane, right? And, uh... Yeah. A plane. We can only watch the planes, no, not fly in them these days. So that's a pity. It will be that. better. Balena getting family together. Yeah, look at that. Connecting families together. I love families it. Together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know awesome. what, Kapil? My application is already running because oh, I already had. You are variables. beating me to the dust. Yeah, I didn't have. I am behind. <laughs> so let's see. Can you see my screen now? Uh, yeah. We see we have uh, mine is coming up now. It's it's, um, it's uh, provisioning. It's yes. just coming online now. Yep. Rafa finish mine. So you are leading the race, uh, Rafael. That's for certain. Um, what happens? <laughs> we, we are up and running. Uh, what comes next is the configuration of the different services. So I guess, Rafael, you could already start uh, with that. I, am, I have some download work yeah. to do here before I'm up and running. Here come the containers. Um, yes. So, so maybe, Rafael, you can explain. Well, do we need to, to have an account at Flight Radar or something like that before I have this up yes. and running? Or? Yes. Good you... point. You don't, uh, if you head to the, um, the uh, site of uh, the repo, the uh, GitHub uh, site, there is uh, so... the full documentation about this. So the step by step guide. So if there are people getting started tonight, that's uh, where you will head in and just follow the uh, read the docs, even though that's boring and you will be all set in no time. It's very simple. Luckily. It's, I remember doing it. It's basically you create your account in, in two or three different sites. Yeah. And that will give you, in some they give you an ID, and in some other services they give you another. And you need to have uh, access to your latitude, longitude, and uh, eight over the sea, both in feet and in meters, by the way. And uh, once you have it, you just have to go to the device variables and um, execute some script, and uh, you have to run. Rafa, we are losing yes. you. Uh oh. Yeah. You are losing me. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, I'll share my screen uh, then can pick up if you are struggling a bit, Rafael, I'll uh, uh, come and pick it up. Well, I can, um, I can share as well, Rafael, um, screen if you want. Or... Okay. Yeah, so uh, what we've done so far, we have, um, we would have seen this beautiful unicorn if we had done it the, uh, uh, the CLI, yeah. Charlie, yeah. the uh, hard way which is uh, set, it, set, it, set it up manually without using the one-click button. So we have now skipped all these 15 steps by a few ones. So next step now is to set up different uh, services, which we will be doing now. Okay. Um, but first, there is one step uh, within the first part here, a general step, which is crucial, and that is to configure your GPS position. Uh, so we will start by doing that. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, I need to find a, um, find let's see the, a... Let's um, see the trick that you use. <laughs> yeah, you could use this trick. So this is Bergen. Uh, so if I just find about my home somewhere here, we can um, uh, mark that on the map. And we get the chords uh, right here. Ah. Uh, over here. Sometimes copy and pasting that, it's it's a nightmare for me. Okay, yeah, you, you get, uh, when you've done, done it a few times, it uh, goes quite uh, easy, but um, I won't brag about that for sure. <laughs> How can you hear me, guys? It's better now? Yes. Uh, yep. Yes. Just one comment on, on this. It's important to have the right uh, location and the altitude. Because what the yes. service is doing is detecting the, the planes that you have in your surroundings. So it will correlate 
and it will inform the services where where you are and where the planes are. Some information we are receiving from the plane will not have the GPS position from the plane. It will only be some uh, modes packets that are that they come without the GPS information. So we need to, to get those details uh, precise uh, oh, of where you are, where the antenna is. Yes, that's important. And that's particularly important for um, the so-called multilateration of the um, planes. So uh, some planes uh, don't transmit GPS um, uh, position, only uh, speed and heading and um, call sign. But um, thanks to crowdsourcing, it's still uh, possible to uh, estimate the position of these planes using multilateration. That means that if you have like uh, three or four different flight trackers in uh, the area, they will measure the time it takes from the single leaving the plane until hitting each ground station. And then you'll do reverse GPS to pinpoint the rough position of it. If that was a bit uh, heavy on the facts, just Google multilateration and you'll be all set uh, to find out what this is all about. Oh, that's some, some bedtime reading right there. And that's all done on the device. Is that what the stick itself is processing? Or is that information actually fed to the cloud and then processed there? Yes, it's fed uh, to uh, the software actually, which does the calculation. Gotcha. And, um, when you do a multilateration, actually all these devices connect to each other directly over uh, proxy to, to exchange this info. Uh, we should be speeding up, so uh, just to show you where to insert these variables. In Balena, there is the concept of um, application variables, which is uh, having shared uh, variables on application level. So I could go in on happy hour if I would like to, for instance, share if I would have several um, uh, feeders in the same spot, I could share the variables. But in this case, Rafael and myself is in um, different ends of Europe. So we would first head in on our respective um, app, not app, uh, device, device, and then use device variables to add this info. So I quickly add the lat, uh, latitude, which is uh, the first part of this coordinate. Then we add the long, like this. And the last common variable we need is the altitude, which is about 200 meters in meters. Okay. So when we do this, also a cool feature of um, uh, Balena is that it automatically re restarts the apps when you set these variables. So everything is updated uh, behind the scenes. Something, uh, and I have a typo in uh, one of them here. Alt, that we need to do one more time. It's case sensitive. Like what question? If, if you are, for example, let's imagine that David would like to, to build his own flight tracker. Does he need a special antenna or, or the same receiver works all around the world? Is, um, oh, OK, because I'm in the US, right? Exactly. Yes, uh, the same uh, work all over. It, it's 1090. Uh, that's uh, megahertz. That's the frequency. Okay, if you are in the US, um, there is an additional standard uh, being deployed right now, being called UAT, uh, which uh, which is specifically for uh, traffic under a certain, certain altitude. That's something we don't have in Europe, uh, so it's, it's not possible for, for us to test. But what I can um, tease you with is that UAT is uh, supported currently, it's implemented. And I'm looking for people to actually try it in the States. So you should be living close to one of the um, bigger airports. And if you do, please uh, reach out uh, to me um, and uh, we can get this tested together because it should work. But I don't have any data to test it on currently. So that's uh, kind of a heads right. up. Well, there's a you. community call out. Who's near a big airport? Um, I mean, obviously, the Phoenix airport is a medium sized, but um, we can uh, we can certainly that's give it a try. Good. Yeah, let's see if that's in the chat we have any volunteer. Yeah, any volunteers? Yes. Any, any Asia? Awesome. 
is it happened something uh, similar? No, it's or? only in the US. This is a US oh, yeah. specific uh, thing US specific. Uh, by now. Uh, next step, just to speed up, I guess, are you going as well, Rafael? I can't see your screen while I'm sharing mine, so I'm a bit... I, I have it running already. You have it running? Yeah. yeah, yeah we also yeah, set yeah. it up with the IDs. Yeah, because yes. he moved from one application that I imagined that it was working now with oh, all the yeah. variables. Yeah. All just my, a little oh. bit of cheating at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's allowed, I guess, for happy hours. Um, I could just then show you the process of uh, getting each of the services set up. Um, I don't know if we do all of them uh, because uh, it's a bit repetitive, uh, and um, but you'll get the idea. So the first uh, thing we'll set up is Flight Aware, which is one of the um, uh, premium services you can feed it to. We do that by uh, reading the instructions, and it's always alternative B, unless you have uh, already a tracker running, which you want to migrate to Balena. Then you should go for alternative A. So what we do now is we'll do some uh, bit of uh, terminal magic. We'll um, uh, instead of using um, uh, going into a uh, desktop config thing, I made some scripts which will set up each of the containers and uh, give us IDs to store in environment variables on the uh, Valena dashboard. So how does that work? Do you still see my screen? Yeah, sure. We mm -hmm. see now the Perfect. Valena yeah. dashboard. Yeah. Right. And this is my application, so I don't mess up or else. Uh, I find first the um, p-aware uh, container, and I click um, in the terminal. So I find that here, p-aware. And if we recall from the instructions, uh, I want to read this slow, that will take some time. But uh, we go to the terminal prompt of the p-aware container and uh, run this command, get id.sh. So let's see if that runs. It's quite exciting to do this live. And uh, a bit nerve-wracking. Get id. Now it will verify that we have set all the necessary settings. Uh, and now it's requesting a new flight aware id from uh, the server. And here it is. Uh, your flight aware feeder id is this one. Okay, oh, so we copy that, okay. and uh, if we go to the instructions, we see that we should um, create a new variable called flight aware feeder id with underscores. Once again, back here, and we type in flight aware feeder id. A little bit of cheating is allowed during happy hour, and then Absolutely. paste. Boom. And what happens now is uh, uh, the uh, containers will uh, do a, re a quick restart. And hopefully we should be able to see uh, actual data quite soon. So that's and, uh, exciting. And um, by data, you mean airplanes. Yeah, airplanes. Just to make screen, yeah. Uh, yeah. While, because you have to, you have to reboot them and, uh, there. Yes. See, that's my that's my what I'm receiving right now, and uh, nice. I have information of the of the track. This is the the path or the different points that I've been receiving from this plane. This is a drone, or what is this? No, that's <laughs> a helicopter. Look, that's the uh, UFO. Yeah. That's yeah. a helicopter. It's probably the police flying over. My uh, coming to you get you. Madrid, coming to get you. Sorry, excuse me. Where are you based in Madrid, more or less, to understand the I am more or less around here, around okay. the Bernabeu Stadium. Okay, so, so and you're getting like a, a plane that it's kind of far away from you, right? Yes. Can you zoom Look, out a bit? The, the, there are some, let's see if I have it here. I love this view, the polar view. Let's see if I can... Oh, it disappeared. I can see it. Yeah, there was a... I saw a plane to his yeah. south. East. Yeah. Look, this is the um, so I'm in the middle and there's the north. So I, I, I can see here the height and the direction of the signals I'm receiving, right? So that's what uh, by by the end of the the month this graph would be full of, of different places. So I mostly receive the the higher the plane it is, I receive more all around. And if they go lower, I will get them more from the west because I have the building. I have the building here. I haven't been able to take the antenna to the roof or anything. 
Hmm. Oh, Real strength. quickly, there is a question that has come in from I shot JR. He was uh, referring to Katil, your your testing here in the United States. He's yes. outside of Detroit, so he's near awesome. DTW, uh, twenty minutes away, and he's got the regular. Will that work? Nice. The good news is that that will work. Uh, so um, uh, what we need to do with your dongle is to serialize it to be identified as the correct um, one. So the uh, setup for this uh, will let you actually run two uh, dongles at the same time. For if you want to feed both ADS-B data and UAT, you will need two dongles uh, in your device at the same time. Uh, but we can certainly test only doing this with um, uh, uh, UIT. If, we, if you only have one dongle available, it will be awesome to check if that okay. works. Well, yeah. Well, so uh, you can um, reach out to me. Um, I, I guess my say. contact info will be in the comments or something. Yeah, can share we'll get you. I'll website, get you connected so. through. Um, I've got uh, both of your information, so I'll get you. I'll get you put in touch. Awesome. Now I also have the, the first service up and running over here. Uh, let's get, uh, hang on, we are on it's Rafa's. It's fun to see the sketches that... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at Rafa's, but let's switch over to Katil's. Yeah. He's got his up and running. Yeah, I got it. Okay. There we go. So wow. Now, yeah, so uh, what is uh, what blows me away a bit is that I uh, have quite some range from uh, my house all the, with the small antenna. So this is uh, 100 nautical miles, so you, see, you can almost see all the way down of the Norwegian uh, coast. So this is Norway. So um, quite some the, range. With the small one or with the big one? No, uh, it's with the small one. And I have cheated a bit because I have a... Um, uh, I had one more small antenna uh, that I showed you set up just outside the window to, to okay. boost it a bit, but it's still um, a small one. And what we could say is that a trick, if you have um, these small antennas, if I have one here, here um, to make it maximum range, make sure it's the right length for the uh, frequency of 1090 megahertz. So just there are tutorials online of how to shorten this. To be the right length and also uh, actually uh, had put the tin can uh, just under this so uh, yeah a regular uh, Heinz tomato box or something uh, that will uh, work as a grown plane for the antenna also extending the range uh, I realized when I talked that this is really nerdy stuff so <laughs> apologies for that <laughs> that's what we love for this happy our audience to loves be, uh, that <laughs> to be honest and um, yeah so this is only one of the uh, five, uh, four or five services you can set up. Uh, we could uh, go through all of them. I guess uh, time is running up, but Rafael, you might have them running already uh, on your uh, device. Uh, yes, I, what I don't remember is the, um, here, it's another one of them. Yes, that's so Flight Rider, the, the feeder. Yeah, yeah this is yeah. the feeder. Then we have the... Plane rather, plane finder, right? No. Yeah, and uh, the plane, uh, the plane finder. Uh, that's the default. Um, that's yeah, the so default. If just go... oh, then we have the one ninety, right? No, what was the other you one? You could actually just take it directly without anything after the slash. Just hit return, and you should get um, plane finder. There it is. This is plane one. finder's local view. Yep. We should well, make a quick uh, mention that URL that you have in the browser right there, Rafa. Um, that is what's called public device URL that gets exposed via a toggle switch in the Bolina Cloud dashboard when you're looking at the device details. Um, that URL is a publicly accessible URL. If you don't have that toggled on, question for you guys. Can you just browse by the local IP address then? Would that work? Yes. Okay. So and you when, were... when you do that, you have to use a port instead. So we okay. could uh, actually try that. Uh, so Rafael, if you copy the uh, local IP of the device, you could um, uh, okay, let's let's see what's the... This one off. 
Yeah. If you had to the local um, uh, IP instead of yep. the proxy, and you could uh, enter uh, for port 8080. Let's see where that takes you. There it is. That's now the uh, flight overview. Nice. So this is uh, running it locally without yep. the um, a proxy. Uh, the proxy is great, by the way. Mm, it's something yeah. I use uh, every day to get access to the road, remote yep. devices. So good yep. job. It's also uh, utilizing a traffic um, uh, rotor uh, in one of the containers to be able to have several of these services. That's, uh, pop up. Uh, well, that's why I was curious about. So this is one of these containers, right? Yes. So uh, the uh, front end proxy. It's yeah, called. Third one. that's uh, yeah. actually yeah. a traffic uh, traffic uh, sort of uh, instance running there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Kittel. I don't want to interrupt. If you, you uh, Rafael, uh, also attempt to change the port number to um, uh, let's see what it was. Uh, I don't recall that on top of my head. Uh, three double o five three. So it's uh, 30053. 30053, this one? Yeah, that's... Yes, and uh, yeah, it's correct. Uh, that's the plane yeah. found of you. So you have okay. both of those in separate mm -hmm. ports. So you could choose yeah. to run this locally. Um, Seems like it might be easier to go with the public device URL, but yeah. That's what I'm using. Uh, uh, when you get yeah. used to it, it's uh, yeah. no, no reason not to use it. It's yeah. so effortless and stable. Um, so uh, what this also gives you, and uh, that's kind of the um, uh, the big carrot or the big uh, bonus of setting up such device. If you spend a few bucks on uh, buying a, a Raspberry Pi and a S RTL SDR dongle, and feed your data to uh, Flight Radar, Radar Box, Plane Finder, and Flight Ever together with the uh, uh, Open Sky Network, which is free. Um, you will actually get premium access to their data, uh, which is something which costs uh, several hundred dollars a year. So if you are one of the uh, big, big uh, flight enthusiasts who pay up uh, yearly to get access to this, no reason to do so. Get one of these uh, little boxes, get one of these uh, sticks here, and you will be both having fun and making profit at the same time. It's nice. highly recommended and uh, you, might, that deal. Um, you might spend too much time on watching uh, <laughs> icons yeah. move across the map. <laughs> but, uh, so you've done the same as I've done. You, you get your, a separate screen with the map and, uh, and just leave it there with a plane flying and everything, right? Yeah, uh, that's uh, it's meditative and nice when you need to relax a bit. Just watch uh, the flight traffic <laughs> over um, yeah. Madrid. Instead like of watching the, the sky, no, yeah, going to a window, you just get in front of mm -hmm. your computer. Mm -hmm. No, you, you see, exactly. you, you find, you see a plane flying, and you say, okay, let's check which one it is, and then you try to guess which which route or what, or, yeah, what approximation they are going to get to the, to the oh, nice. to land and all that. Then you can nice. compare with the airport charts. Well, it's a kind of hobby. That's nice. Um, uh, also, should mention that uh, I think I said it, but um, we're also running the um, a kiosk uh, container, which is something you guys made. Uh, so if you hook this Pi up to a screen using HDMI, it will also show you this visualization automatically. Oh, nice. That's so you can make a little a, standalone unit that yes. renders it onto a little, perhaps like a, you know, maybe seven inch or eight inch LCD screen. Yeah. So it's if I stop like, this kiosk container, uh, I won't break the app, right? Uh, no. Let's stop. It won't break the app. Yeah, uh, I see a question. Uh, I see. Um, uh, Rix Bills says that he is a fan of the project. So thank you. It's uh, due to um, people like you that this is fun to do, the feedback yep. and also people yep. using this. That's awesome. And um, then I see um, uh, we hear a helicopter and try to guess, <laughs> is it coming from the hospital? <laughs> really good question. Uh, when you start feeding Float Raider, they have a really nice premium feature, which is push notifications. 
So uh, to be honest, and this is really nerdy aviation geek uh, lingo, but uh, I've set up also exactly for the um, medical helicopters to to, uh, to try to see where they are going and so on if there are any accidents around. Get the push notification every time it takes off and flies over our house. Oh man, so, wow. So many possibilities. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I live near by a, a hospital here in Barcelona, and what they say is that when there is a helicopter, is the is because they bring like organs from dead people oh, to, to put it into yeah uh, sick people like livers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Transplant. Uh, it's like a yeah transplant. Yeah. So it's like a good sign if there is an helicopter coming. Yeah. Um, what another question, uh, Ketil? Uh, you show at the beginning and what's on your desk. Um, uh, an NVIDIA Jetson, and actually this application is compatible with the Jetson. Can you tell us what what plans you have with the Jetson? Yes, um, I was uh, I watched the happy hours a few weeks uh, ago while the um, uh, open uh, data com uh, mm -hmm. guys were on. Awesome thing. Uh, I have um, I worked worked uh, worked. Sorry, I'm getting a bit dry mouthed here. I worked my full career in the um, media and journalism industry uh, and the media technology industry. So I kind of uh, always look for ways to apply this into journalism and um, uh, public information. So. Uh, Hacking some web traffic cameras and uh, feeding the uh, data into uh, Open Data Cam. I think there's a lot of possibilities for uh, for doing that together with journalism. Um, counting people, uh, counting people uh, waiting to get uh, yep. vaccinated and so on. Um, so um, a lot of possibilities and also the hope is to run this uh, together with um, the um, Valena ADSB on the same uh, Jetson because as of this week, Jetson uh, Nanos are also supported for flight tracking. I think um, that's maybe the first uh, time that's been done uh, on those devices, to my knowledge. Which is hmm. cool. Interesting, yeah. Yes, I see uh, Runa, uh, a good friend of mine, in the comments here. Um, the Home Assistant integration to do an automation. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This is something we have to hack together so we can get uh, flashing the lights uh, in our homes when we have the flyby. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's and, a good idea, actually. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. That's a uh, real in innovation in uh, practice. That's uh, what uh, <laughs> makes the you world will need more USB uh, advanced. Yeah. Or it's at some point, right? Yeah. I need more stuff for sure. <laughs> Actually, there is. I, I, I'm gonna paste here. This is the um, one of the Chris projects that it's a mast fin uh, that I think I don't know if Chris is, all, is still here, but it has this uh, the Things Network, uh, Laura Gateway, the the flight radar, and yeah, and more containers. So mm -hmm. that's that's one bringing this idea you know, of of having you not know, getting the advantage of Valena of having different containers doing different things. And accessing to all of them, so it's really yeah, it's cool. It's a great uh, a project, and also um, much made in heaven to combine um, uh, ADSB flow tracking with uh, uh, the Things Network LoRaWAN uh, gateway. So if you could also do this with um, some GPU power, then you could have uh, three things in one. Uh, in one, exactly. uh, the yeah. good old Kinder surprise, as we say here in Europe. <laughs> Three things in one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, what else? Anything else? I'm looking at the clock. We're a little over. We did make it within the yes. hour. We had some follow-up we conversation, uh, think, and that's yeah. fine. But we we did it. We deployed it within the hour. Um, Mark, any other? Questions? I'm checking comments. I don't see anything else. I think we are good. Yeah, I think so. I think it was a good session. Actually, it's one of the most exciting yeah. uh, applications on the Valena Hub. Absolutely. Thank you, Ketil, for updating it. Um... You did a wonderful job, Ketil. I love this yeah. application. <laughs> Thank you, you too, Rafael. You bet me oh. to it. Uh, I have only got the first uh, the service up and running, so I will spend uh, 10 minutes off camera just to get it done because <laughs> it's uh, 
all the fun services, uh, the uh, radar box, the plane finder, the um, flight radar 24 and open sky network. So I hope um, you guys watching, if you haven't done it already, will uh, get one of these che uh, cheap sticks and start hacking. And like Rune suggested, start experimenting with integrating mm -hmm. this with uh, other tools that you can run on the same device. Yeah, um, just um, yeah. check out. Yeah, uh, check out the GitHub it. repo, of course. You know, um, any contributions, yeah, and contributions, uh, yep. and uh, suggestions to the code base is mm -hmm. uh, encouraged. And also make sure yep. to join our newly launched newsletters, where we will keep you up to speed on um, the latest developments. Very cool. Is there information on that on the GitHub repo? Yes, it's Perfect. quite uh, high on the page, how to sign Perfect. up and stay in the loop. Gotcha. Excellent. Awesome. What else? We have to repeat that we are hiring, maybe, if there is uh, someone new here. Yeah. Um, one last quick call out to go check out the um, check out the jobs section on the Bolino website. It's down at the bottom, click jobs. It brings you through to the workable. Yep, there's the link right there, apply.workable.com slash Bolina. I know front end is on there. Obviously design your own role is on there. I think security might still be on there. Um, so check that out for sure. Mark, do we have something lined up? Is next week, are we taking it off, I think? Yeah, we so will we'll see off. everyone in two weeks. Let's try in two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are taking off. We are going to do a mini internal submit. So we are yep. going to take off to think what we are doing. Yep. And bad. Feel free to send us yeah. your feedback. So <laughs> yep. <you>. yep. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, seen uh, Aisha Jair at the beginning of the session asking for a uh, for a session, Travis versus Aisha JR, what's on your desk? <laughs> yeah, but that well, should be something else that it's not I or the happy hour. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a separate live stream just for that. And I don't know, Ketil had uh, <laughs> gave them a good run for their money there. So I don't know, it could now be a three way battle <laughs> between all of them. Uh, we could have a showdown episode, a uh, se separate stream. <laughs> exactly. All right, Mark, All right. you want to hit the button? I sure. think we're, I think we're good. Thank you, Kito, yeah, for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you Thanks for uh, having me. Oh, this was you, a great uh, pleasure and great fun. And yeah. uh, keep up the great work. And um, uh, I will uh, looking forward to more uh, happy hours uh, over the next weeks and see what you guys come up with next. All right. Sure. Great, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Rafa, Thank for you guys. hanging Have out. Have a great weekend. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, Bye. guys.